So obviously, welcome to the podcast. I guess it's, it was it was a difficult start for Worcester, wasn't it? But what really was behind the turnaround for your team this season? Because as you're now on a winning streak, it has been going so recent, has been going so well recently. What really has been behind that off the court? Um, I think we've just realised uh, as we as time's gone on how uh, how uh, you know how good of a team we are. You know, we finally managed to put uh, pieces to the puzzle. We you know we've. Uh, Unfortunately, had a few players leave, and we've had some players come in. So uh, our team's only gotten stronger, to be honest with you. And I think um, the players we have are, you know, they're really hardworking and you know really determined and stuff. So that always helps. To, that always helps to have a successful team. And I think we just we all get along well, and we all want to win. So I think that's a really crucial part in uh, in how we've been uh, doing recently. So I think as long as we keep that up, I don't really see many teams stopping us, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And of course, this season, especially recently, you've had a lot of minutes. You've been a player that everybody on the team has relied on. Is that a role that you embrace and relish as a player, being a key player in the team this season? Yeah. Um, well, I'm, you know, I'm really glad that my uh, my players, got my teammates, and, and coach also, you know, rely on me a lot. That's something that I've always, you know, no matter what I'm doing, or whether, whether it's basketball or anything, I always like to to be, you know, uh, be res- not responsible, but be in charge or whatever you may call it but uh, yeah definitely I think this role for me is and it's helping me learn more I'm learning way much more now than I have maybe in recent years uh, I've got great players around me I've got uh, great coaches coach Paul James and Danny McGee and Alex Wadu they you know they really help me out a lot they talk to me uh, uh, like more than you know more than most coaches have ever spoken to me so it's really helping me grow as a player as a player individually but I think also in terms of performance a lot of that goes down to my teammates. To be honest with you, you know they uh, they do a great job of allowing me to lead and allowing me to you know to use my few years of experience in the BBL to kind of help us move forward together. And and just the fact that they're all really great listeners. To be honest, with you, to be honest, but like they all they all you know they don't they don't really care or mind about the fact that I'm only 23 or that I'm I'm you know one of the youngers or I'm not an American. Most importantly, like a lot mm-hmm. of the time. Uh, They'll probably some guys are just seeing you know a, a young British kid or maybe inexperienced or hasn't seen much or done much but it's not like that with these guys these guys you know they they trust me and I trust them back so I think that's a key recipe to have a successful team and I'm just grateful enough to be here in Worcester have the opportunity to represent the walls and mm-hmm. fortunately for me it's going uh, it's going well so uh, I'm, I'm you know I'm happy and hopefully it can continue to go on hopefully I continue to play play how I've been playing and hopefully the guys continue to keep helping me out how they've been doing Mm -hmm. and you mentioned coach James I guess such such an experienced guy who knows so much about BBL and just basketball in general how how helpful has he been to you specifically what what's he been saying to you since you joined the team what was really how how's he helped your career I guess he's he's really helped me get to the get to where you know where I've wanted to be this season and He's helped me see stuff in the, in the, in the clear vision. You know, I, I, I spent time in, in Surrey, of course, and Plymouth, which I enjoyed both, you know, or both teams. I think in Worcester, the big thing for me is uh, having a coach with such such experience and such knowledge and even having a great playing history too. He really helps me see see stuff differently. So he helps me see stuff from, from a coach's point of view. So he has me, instead of seeing it, you know, if I, if I make a silly mistake, he, you know, he's still mentors me, chews me, he helps me out a lot and I really totally respect everything he's done for me and I, you know, I, owe, I owe him a lot. He helps me see, uh, see stuff from his perspective, whereas instead of me always trying to find an excuse or a coach or on this or maybe this, he, he helps me see it from, you know, as a coach's point of view, which which as a player makes sense, you know, as a, as, as a coach having your, for example, last night I got into two quick fouls and I wanted to carry on playing and, uh, you know, he helped me, he told me, you know, if we, if I you in, would you have managed to stay the game? I would have had to bring you into the fourth. And so he just he helps me see stuff from a completely different point of view, and I totally respect everything he's done for me. Not only for me, but the team. He's a he's a player first kind of person. He really bends over backwards for everyone on the team. He he does you know he looks out for everybody, makes sure everybody's fine, makes sure you know people are happy where they are. And I think that that's something I told you I really respect about uh, Coach. You know, he's always, he's always there for us, to be honest. He's like a phone call away every time we've needed anything. And his experience for me personally, like, I learned a lot from him. So just little conversations. He would pull me to the side sometimes and tell me 
little key stuff, like, you know, where, as, as a guard, like, where would you rather, where's the easy place for us to score? Like, he helps me understand the game easier. He always tells me uh, basketball is a, you know, a, a simple sport is kind of made difficult sometimes by, by the players who, you know, who kind of do a bit more than they need to. But he, he really, not just for me, he's like a big, big, big part of this team and his experience really, you know, really has shown and we have made a promise to him as a team that one of our goals for him is to get him player of the month, you know, coach of the month, excuse me, player of the month, he probably, probably might not get it now, but, you know, coach of the month, definitely something we want to get for him. So that's, that's definitely a goal we'd like to reward him for, for his, um, his time, his hard work and just everything he does for us guys, really. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was a, a number of new players came in at the start of the season. I guess it was going to be a while before they gelled, but now everything's sort of clicking. Do you think that you've taken the league by surprise a little bit with some of the new guys that have come in, including yourself, who have done so well? And sort of a lot of people don't know much about you, but as a team, you've come together and you've really taken the league by storm in the last 10 games, haven't you? Excuse me. Yeah, um, we've, we've definitely made a, a big impact, and the players we have have a big part to play in that. I think when we signed uh, uh, Robert Gilchrist, that was a big, like a big, you know, uh, an eye opener to the rest of the to the rest of the league. You know, we just managed to find a GB international, a great defensive presence, like a, a real, real, real difference in a in defense for us as well as offense as well. Uh, signing um, Mike recently as well as offensively brought even more even more weapons, which you know we can only get better from. And of course. The initial signing that coach made in the beginning of the year with the imports he's brought in with George, Brandon, and Trey, I think, you know, I think coach did a phenomenal job in bringing the correct guys in. Everyone on this team knows their role. They know, you know, when they're called upon, and they, everyone, everyone knows exactly what they're going to get. And I think that's a, that's a very, that's a, like a very important, very important thing on this team. Everyone, there's no, we don't really have a, uh, a superstar. You know what I mean? We have everyone just does their part and then we win a game truthfully I think Adam Paczynski he, he's a very great pickup. He, he only gets better day by day game by game as well as uh, everyone else we have great university players too who help us out every day making numbers in practice and just getting better to be honest with you mm -hmm. we got uh, we got uh, who else we in we got myself yeah I'm really happy to be here to be honest with you like, I'm really glad to be I uh, think this year for me uh, I'm having a and good year myself by you know playing okay, which is which is good. And I, that does, again, that does go down to uh, the guys on the team. You know, they it's not really me; it's them making me look better. Because you know, if you take away them guys and put me with you know just ordinary players, then I wouldn't be not averaging the numbers I'm getting or playing the way I'm playing. So you know, a lot of credit goes out to the guys that coach the recruit. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you mentioned, you're only 23, but you have so many years behind you in the BBL. I guess, despite being relatively young, are there are there players on the team who sort of look to you for guidance and assistance just as they're building careers for themselves in the league? Uh, I'd, I'd like to think there is. Uh, with the guys on with the guys on the team now on the Wolves team, uh, they I don't think they really care about my age or about where I've played or where I've been or anything like that they really you know they, they're a student of the game and they listen to anyone who's willing to help them out and I think that's really important I think the Americans the rookies the first years they do a great job of just getting the job done you know they, they come in they listen to whoever they whoever they can wherever they can and they just really you know they really knuckle down and get, just get on with their job really so you know I have a lot of respect to them and uh, even some of the older guys like when we're playing the game uh, I'm very Local, so I like to let the guys know what's going on every play. I like to make sure they know what they're doing so we don't have any mistakes, whether on defense or offense. And uh, whether I'm speaking to, to Dallin, who's you know, years ahead of me, or, or Rob, who's way much, one of the most experienced guys on the team, or even someone as George, who's you know, played in the NBA G League, no matter who I'm speaking to, they kind of all you know, uh, they listen, they embrace it, they go with it, and we kind of, you know, that's just how we go, whether it's me. Speaking, or whether it's coach or whether it's one of the other players or whoever, I think we all do a really good job of you know, listening to each other and kind of learning from one another. So that's, I respect it. Mm -hmm. And of course, going towards the VBL Cup final, domestic cup competitions are always so special, but what would it mean to you personally and for Worcester and the local community if you were to win a first ever BBL Cup for the Worcester Wolves? Uh, for the Worcester Wolves, it means, you know, more than anything, they've never... 
won the cup or not been in the final if I'm correct so this is this is not just big for us guys as players but this is very big for Worcester the community Worcester the, the team the fans the crowd the, the support they show us every day not even game just every day you know the constant support so it'll, it'll be really good to to bring back some silverware back to Worcester I think it's fully deserved I think the coaching staff deserve it the, the fans most definitely deserve it and us guys as players I think we deserve it too just from how hard we've worked and how you know, from the shake and from the little shaky start we had at the beginning up to now, where we're kind of a contender for you know every every silverware in the in the league. So I think that's that's really good personally for me. Um, for me, it means a lot. Like I, as you said, I'm I'm young, but I've been in this league for a while. So it, it's like for me, it'll be very rewarding to be able to you know say, okay, well I've got you know BBL Cup under my belt. I've got. Uh, unfortunately, last year in the trophy, we lost to Leicester. So, you know, I've kind of, I've lost more than I've won in the, in the BBL. So this will just be really, for me, will really help me boost and hopefully just, uh, help, hopefully just allow other teams and coaches and people around this league and other leagues to just kind of see that maybe I'm not just a, a young British passport holder player just playing domestically. You know, maybe it, can, it could have potentially opened doors or something which I've really I'd really like that. Yeah, I think mean, for me this is a lot. Like I'm, I've been waiting for the 28th for a very long time. Like I'm be game by game, but the 28th is just it will be a very special day, and I believe we have what it, you know, what it takes to to bring back the cup back to Worcester. Mm-hmm. And of course, I guess playoff a cup final games like this, they're always difficult because you have the high pressure situation with a crazy atmosphere and facing potential elimination. As a professional, how, how does your mindset change from a regular BBL game to going into a cup final? Do you have to prepare differently or is it sort of the same sort of preparation you take one game at a time? Um, we definitely would take one game at a time. We don't, as well as preparing for the cup final, we don't want to lose you know, points in the championship table and go down and then have to work our way up so we do try to maintain we got uh danny mcgee does a great job of you know, scouting he really knows his he helps us understand our assignments for the game uh i think uh, preparation is much more different for a cup final i think we uh thankfully we had a game scheduled for friday before the cup final but i don't think that's on anymore so we do have a, an entire week of pre- uh, preparing for cheshire so i, I think that's going to Favor, that's in favor of both teams, but I think that's much better for the team, for us, with our chances to win. But pressure's there no matter what game you play, you know, whether you're going up against top of the league or bottom of the league. Pressure, you know, game's a game. Basketball's proven that anyone can beat anyone on any given day. So as long as we just remain remain locked in for, you know, 40 minutes and every game just stick to our assignments and follow the scout, I think we should uh, we should come out on top. And just, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course, only going into this cup final against Phoenix, having the massive boost, I guess, of just beating Cheshire in another cup competition, showing that really you can get over the line and you can beat this team. They certainly aren't a team that Worcester shouldn't be competing against. Does that give you a bit of a psychological edge going into the cup final? Or is that something now you have to worry about not being hesitant about going into that yeah. game? Uh, it, it does. It does. Psychologically, we do feel as if you know, we've been in the past and we do feel as if we're the we're the better team but like I said you know you know pressure first pack you you never know you know we we could go in there thinking we're we're the big guys and they could come in there and just smack us around or they could come in there thinking oh we don't stand a chance and give us the game so you never know how it works that just depends who wants it more today and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do whatever it takes to to take that cup home and I'm sure they are too so so it'll definitely be um it was a game. We did play them on the weekend. We didn't. You know, I'm sure both teams are feeling as if they don't want to give away too much before the cup final and trying to, you know, just not show all our weapons at once. Well, of course, all I wasn't playing last night, which is a key player on that team. Uh, we, few, you know, a few players of just little minor injuries here and there, and uh, it was a scrappy game to be honest with you. But cup final will be completely different. I'm sure everybody's going to leave it out on the court and hope best team come out on top. Mm-hmm. And of course, we have to mention your 17 assist performance against Bristol Flyers. Just crazy, of course. Everyone's focusing on it. It was such a great performance from yourself offensively. Is that something that you pride yourself about in your game, your your offensive skill set and what you can bring to teams like that? And is that something that you've focused on improving over the last few years as a player? Yes. Yeah. Over the years, I've kind of come to realise once I've stopped playing uh, at the 
know, at the academy level or the National League level, I, I kind of realised that it's nearly not impossible, but I, I find it more difficult than maybe some other guards my height or my size maybe to, to score the ball and stuff. So I, I kind of figured out that. Plus, it's been a goal of mine ever since I joined the league was to lead the league in assists. And, of course, being up against people like Neil and the other good guards in the league, it, it, it's, it's a challenge, but that's something that's, that's my goal. That's one of my main goals for this year. And on this team, like that's a very achievable goal because the guys we have on this team really help me out on, on, on doing that, to be honest with you. They're great scorers. They get into the right positions and they up down shots. So all the credit to them, to be honest with you. That 17 assists is, is more them than it is me. So, you know, I, I did thank them after the game. They themselves and helping me out how they did. But, yeah, it's, uh, that's definitely something that I, I, I take pride in, in, you know, controlling a team and being able to facilitate for you know such great players that we have on the team and hopefully I can continue to do that for the rest of the season and achieve that goal by coming first in the lead, leading assist. Mm-hmm. And you've spent most of your professional career I guess up until this point in, in the BBL which is which is interesting because I'm sure you've probably had plenty of opportunities to go elsewhere in Europe but how important would you say it is for young players to develop their skills in British basketball and the BBL? Do you think that's the right type of route for players growing up and playing in the UK going forwards? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I think the BBL is not a league that should be taken lightly. I know, I've, I've been here for going on six soon, and uh, I think well five, sorry. And um, it's only gotten better year by year. So all these negative feedbacks you hear about the BBL and stuff, I I, I, I blank all of that out. I don't, you know, I rather experience it than go off word of mouth. But the uh, BBL is definitely a league. Like I recommend to young young up and coming players. You know, if you've got a, a, a local a local BBL franchise, you know, I'd say there's you know, set yourself a little target, aim, you know, right, let me try and see if I can make that squad or the second team or, you know, just give yourself little achievable achievable targets where, you know, most guys want to head out to head out to America and then they kind of, you know, then it's like, oh, well, they've gone under the radar for a bit and then they come back and it's just, you know, I, I, I'm more of a keep all your options open. I, the reason I stayed was just I had a few reasons, obviously, uh, family being number one and, um, and the other thing was just you know, I, I enjoy my time in the BBL. Of course, it's not always gone how I wanted to, but I get to play, wake up and play basketball in my own country. And that's, to me, that's a blessing. And I'm very grateful for that. And I, I, I'd recommend that to anyone who's trying to, you know, play professional or you represent represent a team in their country and stuff like that. So I, for me, that's, you know, I, if I do if I do get a few offers now and then or during this off season and stuff, but like I said, I keep all my options open and I enjoy it what's best for myself and my family you know, at the time. Mm-hmm. And I guess, just finally, how confident are you that Worcester can ride this wave of momentum beyond the BBL Cup final and go towards, I guess, the end of the season and the playoff chase and take on the best teams in this league, like Newcastle, like Leicester, and perhaps compete for some silverware at the end of the season? Yeah, no, that's definitely our goal. Our goal is to win everything until... You know, until it's no longer possible. We want to win. We want to become first on the league until you know it's no longer possible. Until one of the top teams has gone too far for us to catch up, then we'll settle for second. If you know, once it's no longer possible, uh, I think Worcester on the verge of you know having the name of being one of the best teams in the league, and I think we will get that because I don't see many teams stopping us. Of course, we have lapses and we have bad days as everyone else does, but I, I think I think with the group of guys we have this year and the commitment everyone's shown and the hard work everybody puts in, uh, it's very doable. You know, I, I do believe we could be one of the best teams in the league and, and possibly win everything. And we are chasing the right now the top top four, then aim for top three, and then take that number one seed. Hopefully, so you know, fingers crossed everything goes well. As long as we continue to work hard and and uh, just keep giving it everything we've got, hopefully, winning on the 28th will kind of just you know open open our eyes a bit. You know, all right, well, you know, we've won one now. That's Hopefully, you know, things can only go up for us, you know, hopefully. Okay, thank you, LVC.